France said on Saturday it supports efforts to overturn Niger's military coup. This followed a meeting in Paris between France's Foreign Minister Catherine Colonna and Niger's Prime Minister Ohumadu Mohamedou, who also visited with supporters outside the Niger embassy. It's a disaster and it's really very painful for the population, he said, adding, We strongly condemn this coup d'etat which calls democracy into question and which seems to shorten the term of office of a democratically elected president to whom the people of Niger by a large majority entrusted a five-year mandate. We therefore demand that President Mohamed Bazoum be restored to his seat and complete his term in office. Friday, defense chiefs from West Africa's regional bloc said they had drawn up a plan for military action if the coup leaders do not reinstate the president by Sunday. That raised the specter of further conflict in a region that is already battling a deadly Islamist insurgency. One neighboring country that won't participate in a potential battle is Chad. The defense minister said Saturday, We will never intervene with our military. We encourage dialogue. We want stability to come back to Niger. In Niger's capital city, residents remained defiant Saturday. This man told Reuters, As Nigerians, we said to ourselves that if the military decided to intervene in this situation, we would be with them all the same, and we're determined to go wherever they want, and we're not even in favor of negotiations. The 59-year-old coup leader, General Abdurrahman Tiani, who received some of his military training in France, said the junta will not back down. I think we can all agree that freedom of expression is not limitless. Your words have consequences. Your actions have fallouts. So the line must be drawn somewhere. The only question is where. So there are upgrades across the board. All three defense services are getting bigger and more lethal weapons. And this is the need of the hour. China's buildup on the border remains a concern. 38 months and counting. India needs better weapons to secure its front lines. So arms trade is just another source of income for them. And this is a serious setback in the fight against terrorism. All because of American callousness. So the stock rally is like a vote of confidence from investors. They are betting on India. They're positive about the India story. It's the government's job now to repay that faith. This incident once again highlights the role of social media and the internet. It's a double-edged sword, really. So tough times for the world. There is inflation, layoffs and pay cuts. But not for King Charles of Britain. Forget pay cuts. He's all set to receive a massive pay hike. What is offensive to one religion could be sacred to another. Europe must realize this. They keep lecturing the world about minorities how they should be protected, how their rights and culture must be promoted. But at home, it's the exact opposite. People are burning the holy book of your minority group. And what is your response? You say it's freedom of expression. 